My story with my husband spans nearly a decade together, blessed with two sons, ages five and three. I truly adore him. He's my rock, my solid fortress of support. Yet, like everyone, he's got a quirk. He loves to crack jokes. Or, well, he used to. Now, don't get me wrong. Humor's a great thing. And I'd agree. Sometimes his jokes had me doubled over, laughing until my sides ached. But more often than not, they left me utterly deflated, sometimes even in tears. Though he'd always apologize, he just couldn't seem to find the line. Then my friend suggested, why don't you pull a heavy prank on him too? Pretend you've cheated, act withdrawn, and really let him sweat it out. They assured me he'd be the one begging to know what's going on. It so happened my husband was out on a business trip and wouldn't be back for three days. Perfect timing for a little payback, they thought. To be clear, I'd never actually cheat on him, nor had I ever been cheated on. I couldn't even imagine the kind of hurt it would bring. When he finally came back, we spent a wonderful night together, missing each other terribly. The next day, he doted on the kids while I was at work. That evening, I dropped the boys off with my mom so my husband and I could enjoy an entire week alone. And of course, for me to stage this elaborate joke. Over the following days, I played my part, looking withdrawn, pensive, and sighing heavily. Concern etched deeper into his face with each passing day. On the fourth day, he wrapped me in his arms and gently asked, My love, what's wrong? I broke away, sat down, and began sodding harder than I ever had. I'm so sorry, I said through my tears. I've fallen in love with someone else. I cheated on you, and I kept on crying. He paused for only a few seconds before replying, I wish you happiness. I'll file for divorce tomorrow. Then he walked out, climbed into his car, and drove off. I didn't even get the chance to tell him it was all a joke. He turned off his phone, left his company in the hands of a friend, and disappeared. Devastated, I told his friend everything, but he berated me too. Are you insane? Of all things to joke about. He tried calling my husband's other work numbers, but they were disconnected. All I could do was wait and hope. The next day, I heard from work that a colleague, a lawyer, had been hospitalized, with rumors swirling that my husband was behind it. I was stunned. Although he'd trained in martial arts his whole life, he was the gentlest soul I knew. But yes, it turned out he'd indeed tracked down my colleague, the person I worked most closely with and frequently traveled with on business trips, and he'd beaten him up. I went to the hospital to see my colleague, lying in a bed, covered in bandages. He was horrified and utterly confused about why my husband had attacked him. They'd only met once when I introduced them. I explained everything, and his reaction was loud enough for the whole ward to hear. I'd kill over a prank like that. Understandably, he was deeply hurt by it all. And we barely spoke afterward. I couldn't blame him. I'd probably feel the same. Still, in the end, my colleague and I managed to patch things up. He even withdrew the police report. But I was a wreck. I came home in tears, trembling, nearly fainting from the stress of it all. I lashed out at my friends for encouraging me to pull such a reckless prank. Later that evening, my husband's lawyer called. My husband had filed for divorce, and I'd be getting the paperwork soon. I asked where he was, but even his lawyer claimed he didn't know, saying only that my husband would appear at the hearing. I was stuck in this nightmare for two months, every day torturing myself for such a cruel joke. The only thing that kept me going was our children. I could focus on them and take comfort in their presence. Then came the day of the hearing, August 28th, a date forever etched in my mind, waiting for him in the courthouse hallway. I was a bundle of nerves, barely able to keep it together. When he arrived, I rushed toward him, desperate to speak, but the stress had me so tightly wound that I couldn't get a single word out. Finally, I gathered myself, but before I could say anything, he pushed me away and said, Stay back. I can't even look at you. I blurted out. It was a joke, but he refused to listen. 
Thank goodness his friend was with me that day. He stopped my husband and explained everything. I was so overwhelmed that I lost my balance and started to fall. My husband reached out, catching me just in time. When I came to, I broke down and apologized, begging for forgiveness, though I could see doubt clouding his eyes. Finally, he said, Take a lie detector test. I agreed without hesitation. The test proved my truth. Right there, in the testing office, he held me tight, his whole body shaking, his heartbeat thundering so loudly I felt paralyzed with shock. That night, I took him home, tucked him in, and lay down beside him. Once he fell asleep, I got up to hang up his jacket, and when I checked his pocket, I found a bottle of heavy-duty antidepressants. My own heart seemed to stop. Without a second thought, I threw them away. For three more weeks, my husband distanced himself, asking that I never pull such a joke again. It was during that time that I realized something deeply humbling. I probably didn't love him as much as he loved me. I'd always thought I was starved for his affection, but I'd been so wrong. Seeing how much this had hurt him made me feel incredibly grateful that I'd married such a kind, forgiving man. To make things right, my husband even sought out my colleague to apologize. He helped him buy a card he'd been dreaming of, despite my colleague never mentioning it. My husband had simply noticed. Since then, our families have become close friends, spending holidays together. This past New Year's, everyone gathered at our home, and my friends reminisced about that innocent joke. They laughed, but the men and I, not a single smile. It just wasn't funny to us anymore. That experience made me realize how precious my husband is to me. The fact that I could hurt him so deeply with a joke still chills me. And then I think of those women who claim they don't receive enough affection or attention from their husbands, that they're losing interest in them. As my mother wisely says, if you think you're lacking love from your husband, go to your closet and look at your things, then at his. Look at your wardrobe, compare your furs to his jackets, walk to the hallway, look down at your shoes, and then at his. If your complaints still persist after that, then it's not about your husband at all. It's you. Maybe you're just looking for an excuse for something you wanted to do anyway. No amount of love or attention from your husband will change that. In short, there are some people who will find fault no matter what. And honestly, she's absolutely right. Those who deceive genuinely loving partners are nothing short of traitors. I truly hope men who face that kind of betrayal can find happiness with someone who values them completely.